welcome back into this course. In the last session, we have discussed about the process of formation of the RNA from a double strand duplex DNA. This process was called transcription, which is a part of the central dogma of biology. Now, the next step, because once the RNA is synthesized, then the next question is what is the uh, how the proteins are synthesized and these proteins are synthesized by a process what is called translation process. Okay. So, translation is the is the process or it is the final product of gene expression to make a polypeptide chain of amino acids whose sequence was prescribed by the genetic code. So, there are now certain things which we need to clarify. One is this important thing trans the genetic code, another is translation which we already know that when we have the RNA specifically now we have to say I told you that what is the function of the three classes of RNA. The mRNA is actually uh, translated the information in the mRNA is translated into the protein. Okay. Now, what is the basically in protein we have amino acids linked together one after another. So, which amino acid will be linked to which the, uh, the other amino acid that will depend on the sequence of bases in the mRNA. Okay. And that is what is called the genetic code. Okay. So, genetic code is basically a three letter code, three letter code means that in, uh, in RNA we have these four bases A U G C. Now, the genetic code is, uh, is a three letter code that means, out of these four bases you can by permutation and uh, combination what you can have that you can have 64 combinations. You can have 64 combinations if you want to make a three letter code from these four letters. Okay, like suppose say one will be definitely A U G another can be A G C. So, just keeping in the front you can have A G C then A uh, then you can change this A G U that also can change and then you can have A C G. So, like way uh, the basically what is the number ultimately how the 64 number is attained. Basically, you have three positions where you have to fill with these four letters and there could be another important point there could be repetition of the letters that means what is repetition that means you can have three a's also you can have three g's three u's or you can have two a's one c all these things so to solve that basically what you do that for the first position you have because there are four bases so you have four possibilities for the first to fill up the first position. The second position also you have four possibilities because you can have repetitions okay. and for the third position you can also have four possibilities. So, the total number of possibilities is 4 into 4 into 4 and that is called 4 cube that becomes 64. Okay. So, these three letter codes actually code for a particular amino acid that means a single base cannot code for a particular amino acid nor a double letter code cannot in, uh, indicate or translate into an amino acid. It requires three letters that means three base codes letter means the bases in the RNA three base codes that code for a particular amino acid. Okay. Now, we know that there are in proteins there are 20 amino acids. So, virtually what we need the minimum number of 
genetic codes that we need is 20 that would have been sufficient that one genetic code will translate for one amino acid. However, 20 the number you cannot reach the 20 cannot be reached if you take a two letter code then your number of genetic codes will be 16 that does not encompass the whole 20 amino acids. So, nature had no other option to bring in a third letter. So, that you have sufficient number of codes to cover up the to cover the entire amino acid spectrum. Okay. But while doing so what now you see that you have many extra extra codes right many extra codes because you have 64 uh, 64 basically now these individual uh, three letter codes are called the codon. Okay. So, genetic code is the basically the whole alphabet structure that which amino acid is expressed by which genetic uh, which codon. Codon is the three letter three not letter sorry three base sequence that code for a particular amino acid that is what is called a codon. Okay. Particular amino acid that is what is called a codon. Now, how many codons are there? 64 codons. Okay. 64 codons can code for 20 amino acids, but the, uh, the story is not complete there about the genetic code out of these 64 codons there are three codons which are called stop codons or nonsense codons okay nonsense means that does not make any sense that means that does not code for any amino acid so that is called the, these are called stop codons and the rest 61 are coding for the different this two is one or, or the other 20 amino acids. Okay. Now, let us just um, uh, why this is important because now we are trying to discuss the translation process. Translation process means how the mRNA from the mRNA the proteins are synthesized. Okay. Once we have the we say what is the uh, once we have the protein then the primary structure becomes very important that which amino acid is connected to which amino acid. Okay. Different proteins have different amino acid sequence okay. and this amino acid sequence is dictated by the sequence of codons in the mRNA. Okay. I hope this is clear. So, mRNA you can divide it into several codons and if it is transcribed into uh, sorry translated into the protein then what you have depending on the codon here you have a particular amino acid say 1 depending on the codon here you have the second amino acid 2 and depending upon the codon here you have the second third amino acid. So, this way the amino acid sequence is uh, is varied by varying the different the, the codon sequences in the mRNA. Okay. Remember the codon is present in the mRNA. Huh? So, the genetic code is the entire all the 64 codons are like a periodic table the a table containing the all the 64 codons and then it and reading that you can tell that which amino acid is coded by which codon because it is impossible to remember that uh, if I say what codes for A U U I think it is very difficult unless you are really going through the uh, through that genetic table that uh, genetic code uh, up to number of times then possibly you may uh, you may remember some things, but it is very difficult uh, uh, and it is not required also because whenever we uh, in periodic table it is still a little bit easier or may easier means for the chemists because periodic table again if I say what is in the group 5. So, unless you are a chemist and handling the periodic table for a long time, you will not be able to tell what is there in the, you may tell the first one, 
but then the what is the second element, third element, fourth element, fifth element. So, rather than memorizing this better check what is the genetic code if you have that uh, in front of you you can tell ok this is the code this codes for this is the codon and this codon codes for this particular amino acid ok. Now, let us see what the table this is the what I am talking about the the table the genetic code this is what is called the genetic code is uh, now in the genetic code how this is read. See you see all this u c a g on this side then u c a g on the top side and then you have several uh, the other see each segment contains all these four four uh, nucleo uh, side uh, nucleotide bases ok the four bases. Now, this is the now when I say a u u suppose a a a u suppose you have to always specify which is the 5 prime end which is the 3 prime end. Now, in this table in most of the books it is written that this is the first letter this is the second letter this is the third letter letter means it is a base ok here. Now, the first letter is starting from 5 prime end and the third letter is ending at the 5 prime end 3 prime end ok. So, now how to read this table. So, if you the if the first base is u the second base suppose is u also and the third base. So, the this is the first letter. So, you have taken the first letter u you have taken the second letter now next you take the third letter. So, one of these you have to take. So, if you suppose I say what codes for u u u remember this is 5 prime this is 3 prime. So, that will be u u u then you see that what is written in the second uh, in this in the second letter box what is written under u u u that means this one this is u u u this u u u is coding for phenyl alanine ok. Suppose I say what is c c g 5 prime to 3 prime what codes for c c g. So, how do you go about it? So, you take c and then the next c second letter is c that means you have to take this one. So, c c and g where is your c c g that means you have to take here this is your g. So, c c g so you will find here uh, in the in the second column you will find c c g this is c c g. So, c c g codes for proline. So, that codes for proline ok. So, this way you can remember one thing that I can uh, always uh, try to fool you by giving some suppose I say what is g a u, but I put 5 prime here 3 prime here. So, if that be the case you always should uh, uh, do not be misled that you should not this is your third letter remember that and this is the second letter and this is the first letter ok. So, the from the 5 prime end the first letter starts. So, that is u a g what is u a g let us see this is u this is a and g. So, u a g is here then it is always it will be always in the column of the second letter ok u a g that is a stop codon ok. So, that means this is a stop codon. So, that means at as as soon as you reach that a u g uh, uh, u a g that means the protein synthesis whatever mechanism it is forming that will stop at that point ok. So, now we come to the translation once we have that first of all where does translation takes place. Now, remember uh, in a prokaryotes you do not have any you do not have any compartmentalization. So, what happens here suppose this is your DNA. So, that is uh, that will transcribed into the a mRNA. So, suppose the a mRNA is coming out like this synthesized like this it is coming out and into the cytosol because everything is now cytosol there is no compartment. So, uh, the protein synthesis 
can take place before the whole mRNA comes out of the DNA machinery. Again I repeat that maybe I can use another pen. Um, see what happens what I am saying that if you sorry if you have suppose the DNA it is a big one and you are copying it into the mRNA. Okay, if you are copying it into the mRNA. So, suppose the mRNA is suppose this is your template strand uh, this is your template what happens the red suppose this is your change that is not being changed let us see why the color is not changed. So, yeah. so, this is the template strand and now the mRNA is synthesized from this end suppose this is your 3 prime and this is your 5 prime end. So, the mRNA is being synthesized from here suppose this is the initiation site. So, the as the mRNA is synthesized it is coming out of the system okay. and then the synthesis is not complete yet, but because there is no there is no separate compartmentalization of this process. So, wherever there is this protein making factory which is called ribosome by the way ribosome is nothing but a, a protein making factory which is also present in the cytosol. So, the ribosome will now start on this and start will start making the proteins that means before the mRNA synthesis is complete in you in prokaryotes the ribosome can start working okay start working and then synthesize the proteins because this is the mRNA. So, from mRNA is only made because you need the protein from the mRNA. So, the protein is synthesized almost parallelly, okay. but in eukaryotes that does not happen because in eukaryotes what happens there are two things one is first of all eukaryotes have a nucleus a separate nucleus where there is the DNA. Okay. So, when the RNA is transcribed so the RNA is transcribed so it will more or less remain here and um, once it is complete then it is released in solution and then goes into the ribosome this is suppose the ribosome and the protein is now synthesized depending on the sequence of the sequence of the codon sequence of the mRNA. Okay. So, that is one that is the difference, but the reason why that cannot straight away go to the ribosome because uh, we will go into that because in eukaryotes whatever mRNA is prepared that needs to be uh, processed processed uh, so that we get the actual mRNA. Uh, I will come back to that point uh, a few slides later. First let us talk about the the, UK, uh, the prokaryotic system. Okay. Now, what is the ribosome? How does it look like? Ribosome actually basically it is there are two components of ribosome two sub units. One is called a small sub unit whose uh, which is the 30S sub unit. Now, this is another S means another unit of uh, showing the molecular weight. This is a sedimentation rate there is some unit which is the Sedberg unit depending on the sedimentation sedimentation rate of the of the system or the molecule that you are talking about. Okay. So, this is a 30S sub unit and there is a 50 s sub unit that means, there is a small sub unit and there is a big sub unit okay. and this is the large sub unit and the protein synthesis is taking place when, when both are actually uh, held together and that is what is called the complete ribosome where the protein synthesis ultimately takes place. Okay. Remember because this is not molecular weight you cannot just directly add that the ensemble that means, this two things are held and the overall uh, weight will be 50 plus 30 that does not happen here, because it is not proportional it is not just addition of molecular weights that 100 plus 200 is 300 it is not like that that if you do a sedimentation of study of this 
then you will see that that becomes 70 s. Okay. So, this is a 70 s ribosome in case of prokaryotes, little bit smaller than the eukaryotes. Eukaryotes ribosome is 40 s plus 60 s, okay. but it has also have a small and a large uh, subunit and the protein synthesis is done when the two are held together. Okay. So, this is the total ultimately becomes 80 s. So, the eukaryotes have 80 s uh, ribosome which consists of a 40 s small unit and a 60 s small unit and in the eukaryotes you have 70 s ribosome and that has got a 30 s and a 50 s subunit. Okay. You see that as this what is uh, the ribosome is made up of what? Ribosome is made up of many uh, these are ribosomal RNAs, it is made up of RNA as well as protein and there are there are many proteins in the ribosomes. If you take this eukaryote ribosome the small subunit has 18 s RNA, okay. this is called ribosomal RNA and then 33 proteins. The large ones has 28 s RNA and 49 proteins. So, all these are for all these are held together and forms what is called the ribosome complex. Ribosome is nothing but it is a it is a combination of proteins and ribosomal RNA. Okay. And this is one of the most important machinery in the in the cell because you are making the proteins which are basically the molecules which will we require to sustain the living system. They actually work. Okay. The DNA has directed via RNA to synthesize the proteins and the proteins are basically the ones which which do all the job that are necessary. Okay. Mostly there are few exceptions. Okay. Now, what is tRNA? It says that tRNA we know what is mRNA, mRNA contains the codons okay, and that codons are specified. Uh, how are the sequences of the codons uh, dictated? It is dictated and remember the mRNA is coming from the template strand of the DNA. So, if you know the template strand sequence, you can write what is the sequence of the messenger RNA and you can now make out what will be the codon sequence in the mRNA and from that you can write what is the protein sequence that will be made ultimately the primary sequence of the protein. Okay. Now, that is mRNA contains the codon sequence, R RNA the ribosomal RNA plays an important role and is present in the ribosome that is the protein making factory and then there is tRNA. The duty of the tRNA is to bring the, the amino acids one after another and then supply it so that the protein chain grows one after another. Okay. How does the tRNA look like? tRNA has a structure like this. As I said that in these molecules there may be uh, there may be complementary inward but in the self complementary like I showed you the hair pin. It is a single molecule, but that folds because one portion is complementary to the other portion. Similarly, the tRNA also has many complementarity, so that it ultimately takes a shape like this. It is a clover loaf type of shape. Now, this is the 5 prime region and this is the 3 prime region. And in the what happens in the 3 prime region there is a wedge definitely that will ultimately end with a wedge here and this wedge is actually connected finally, it will be connected to uh, like a small smaller one okay. through this A via acylation the amino acids are connected. So, the amino acids are basically forming an ester bond 
and it is attached to the tRNA and these amino acids are actually uh, being delivered to the growing polypeptide chain by the tRNA. Now, tRNA has another very important aspect and that is at the this is the uh, this is the anticodon site means when tRNA uh, tRNA has to bind we will go to that tRNA has to bind to supply to the ribosome to supply this amino acid, but how does it know where to bind that depends on the sequence here and this is what is called the anticodon sequence anticodon sequence. So, the tRNA now we know that tRNA has this acylated amino acid and it has got an anticodon. Uh, anticodon means basically the opposite of the codon, but complementary you can say it is the complementary of the of the genetic of the codon. Okay. And uh, so, when there is this yes I think this is the uh, what is what I was saying that in the uh, in this is the shape of the of your tRNA and uh, there is this why this takes a shape because there is intramolecular hydrogen bonding like this. The 5 prime end is protected as a phosphate, 3 prime which is free and that is where the amino acids are attached. This one like G A A it is called the anticodon and this whole loop kind of thing that is called an anticodon loop. Okay. So, now let us go to the uh, translation machinery. The amino acid attaches to the as I already said that tRNA can base pair with the codon of the mRNA at the anticodon on the tRNA. Let us see what does it mean. First, so first step is once the mRNA is synthesized, the tRNA also tRNAs are usually free, but they have to now hold up the amino acids via this acylation. So, charging of the charging is the process of covalently attaching the amino acid to the tRNA. So, each tRNA each tRNA is covalently attached to amino acids. Now, which amino acid will be attached that depends on the sequence of the anticodon. That means, if you have this is your tRNA the question is if I say that which amino acid will be attached here that depends upon what is the anticodon sequence here. Okay. Now, suppose this is uh, suppose this is your I will write any sequence say u sorry u a u a c. Suppose the anticodon is u a c then what will be the actually the codon of this this is the anticodon. So, the codon of this will be A U G. Now, if you go to the genetic code structure, the genetic code uh, table, what is A U G? This is your A, what is your U, uh, then U, and this is your G. Where is your G? Your G is here. Okay. So, A U G must be somewhere here, A U G. You see it is methionine. So, that means depending on the depending on this uh, this one uh, a u g this is I think where is the other one u u a c. So, a u g codes for methionine. So, that gives a an anticodon here. So, the t RNA actually we had started with the reverse direction that suppose the anticodon is u a c. Now, we write what is the codon for that and we go to the genetic table and see that this codes for methionine. So, if this is methionine then this will have a methionine attached to here. So, depending on the anticodon the amino acid that will be taken up. Okay. So, the best way to do it see the anticodon 
and then if some question is asked that what is the uh, amino acid that will be uh, that will charge the tRNA that depends on the anticodon sequence. So, what you do you write the codon according to you write the, uh, the codon sequence and then go to the genetic table uh, and the genetic code table and then find out which amino acid is attached to that. Okay. Finally, I think uh, as I eukaryotes as I said it is much more uh, complicated. So, we will talk about the prokaryotes and that will be sufficient for our uh, course. Steps in translation, first there will be initiation. What is initiation? The two subunits of the ribosome come together and the start codon on the mRNA ribosome is aligned to set the reading frame. Okay. What is reading frame? Reading frame is that frame that sequence of uh, codons in the mRNA that is called the reading frame. Then once these are all there that means, you have this small ribosome and the, the small subunit and the big subunit and you have the your messenger RNA has been is is um, attached to this ribosome okay, bind to the is bound to the ribosome. Then um, the it has to start now. So, there must be a start see where it will start there must be a start codon otherwise again the question comes that where does the protein synthesis start which amino acid is added at the start. So, that is one question and then stop codon we already know that there are three codons which are stop codons. So, stop codon is not a problem what is a start codon. Suppose, this is a start codon we will we'll go back and then we will uh, tell what is the start codon, but this is a particular codon which suppose this is the start codon. So, the amino acid synthesis the protein synthesis now starts okay. and the tRNA the tRNA will come here one tRNA sorry one tRNA first comes here and binds here and bringing one amino acid here okay. and next to it is another tRNA which comes here and we will have another amino acid here at the 5 prime end. Now, there will be a reaction between these two amino acids. So, when the reaction takes place this amino acid is transferred to that one making this tRNA free of amino acid okay. and then what happens? the amino acid which now the tRNA which is free from amino acids that will now leave and this part will now come to occupy this part and leaving this other site free. So, another tRNA will come and then we will sit here and then the reaction takes place like this. So, I think I can explain it better by showing the diagram um, see basically here what is shown here. The ribosome we told that there is a small subunit and a large subunit. Okay. So, initially the mRNA comes directly from the from your nucleus uh, from uh, in prokaryotes that is not the nucleus it can directly come uh, to the cytosol and then what is not written here is that there is some binding again there is kind of a promoter region some binding sequence in the ribosomal RNA that is present in this small subunit. So, ribosomal RNA is present here okay. and there is a proper binding region in the ribosomal RNA. So, the AM RNA comes and now binds it. So, this is the binding point of the binding point of the messenger RNA by the way this is your R RNA. Okay. So, that means, here what is shown here that first the A mRNA as I told you A mRNA binds to the small subunit because there is a binding pocket in the ribosomal RNA present in the small subunit and once that is done then the large subunit comes and forms a complex. So, this is com what the complex complex is called the ribosome, but now you have a combination of both small and the large. Now, the large subunit has I think this may be I can I can make it little uh, simpler and also much easy to understand. 
So, now you have I will write a shape uh, like this. So, this is your small subunit. So, first the m RNA comes and there is a r RNA sequence which it recognizes and once it recognizes now it is the m RNA right. This is your m RNA. As soon as that forms now the bigger the other subunit other subunit of the ribosome the, the ribosome comes and now this is the actual ribosomal ribosome where the mrna is already bound okay so that means there is a sequence somewhere there where it is anchored now the initiation the mrna has codons here right the mrna has has codons and then according to the codons trna will come and bind and trna remember has anticodon okay this is little complicated but you have to be very attentive here now this m this ribosome has different sites one site is called the p site and another site next to it is called the a site P site is nothing but peptide site and this is the amino acid site, amino acid site, acid site and on the left side of it there is something which is called an exit E site that is exit. Okay. Now, this suppose this is your first codon here. Okay. Codon is a three letter three letter code. So, now according to this codon you will have a T RNA which will be bound to it. Okay. It will have a three RNA bound to it and there will be an amino acid here and the amine the amino acid site there will be another depending on the code here another T RNA that will come another T RNA that will come and bind to it. Okay. So, this is your O C O one particular amino acid R 1 N H 2 and this is your O C O another amino acid R 1 and NH2. So, this is the situation. Now, let me tell you this P site is always a consensus sequence is A U G. What is A U G? A U G codes for methionine, A U G codes for methionine. That means, this is the binding point and wherever there is now AUG the synthesis will start from there. So, the methionine this methionine containing T RNA will be the first one to bind to the P site and then the amino acid site the one of the amino acid will T RNA will bind depending on the codon next to AUG. Okay. Now, there will be a reaction between the two. So, this reaction is nothing but a trans a trans acylation. So, this N H 2 comes here attacks here and uh, sorry this breaks and this breaks. So, what does it mean? This means, so the ribosome what I again the small one the large one. Okay. So, now you have the A m RNA bound to it. So, first this is suppose the binding point the location where it is anchored then the then it sees where is your A u g from the starting point from the where it is bound. Suppose there is A u g here. So, you will have a T r n a attached to it I am not writing the full geometry and there is a and there is another codon, but before that I told you that there are 
three sides. Na? One is the P site, another is A site and another is E site on the left. This is exit, this is peptide, this is amino acid. So, there will be a amino acid here attached to it and there will be an amino acid here attached to it. Okay? These two are suppose different amino acids. So, the reaction that takes place is very simple, it is a trans acylation. So, it was O C O R and then N H 2 and next to it is another T R N A which will also have O C O suppose R 1 N H 2. Okay, although they do not look proximity, but actually they are quite proximal and then this N H 2 comes attacks here releasing the T R N A. Now, you see what happens the product of this is that this is a free T R N A with O H here and this one has the protein attached to it O C O then you have uh, you have first O C O then you have the N H sorry N H uh, no sorry uh, this is C O you do not O. So, you start O C O then R 1 let us see again there is it is ok just a second. So, you have O C O then R 1 then what you have is N H then you have C O and then you have R and then you have N H 2. That means, you have now formed the first peptide bond. Okay. So, what happens now? So, you have basically now your this is the small, this is the large, this is your exit site, this is your P site, this is your A site. Okay. So, now after this at here is your free T R N A, free T R N A, because the methionin that A U G which codes for methionine that is now transferred into the A site. So, A site is now having this dipeptide O C O R then N H then C O then this is methionine I can write M E T it will be always methionine and then N H 2. Okay. So, that is the scenario. Now, what will happen now this is the M R A. Okay. So, this is your starting point A U G again I repeat A U G. Now, what happens this ribosome will move one frame to the right side. So, if that happens then as it moves this will it will not these T R N A's will not move as this moves that means, this will now come to the E site that means, the free T R N A will come to the this is the free T R N A okay, R N A because this is moving. So, this point is here now P will be here. So, now P will hold the T R N A which is holding the dipeptide chain with the peptide okay. in this case a dipeptide and the amino acid site is free now the amino acid site is free. So, now what will happen another T R N A will come and which T R N A will come will depend on the sequence of the M R N A here. So, another T R N A comes and the same reaction happens the N H 2. So, you will get a tripeptide and then the ribosome slowly moves like I think it is it may be somewhere here see A U G is the first one. So, this is the step where the T R N A this is exit that means, the free T R N A now goes out okay. and leaving this leaving the P site as the growing peptide chain. The first one is methionine in this case the example that is given here the second one is proline. Now, this is your A site. So, this is the P site this is the A site earlier what was happened it was shifted like this. So, this was 
this was occupying your P site at that time. Okay. So, as it shifts the what happens the growing peptide chain now goes to the P site the amino acid site is free. So, now the next amino acid will be brought by the tRNA and depending on the codon here. So, it is G u u that means the anti codon will be C a a C C here it is G G u. So, that will be C C a. So, now C C a you have to see what codes for G G u definitely what is written here glycine. Okay. So, that will come here and the next reaction will take place the NH 2 of this glycine will attack the peptide bond here attached to the proline and the whole peptide will transfer to the right side. Okay. And then this also starts again moved one frame means one codon uh, it will shift to the right and then crossing one codon and then what happens all the time the there will be an amino acid which will be uh, there will be a tRNA which will be free. Now, that will come to the exit side and that will go away. So, in this way the protein synthesis takes place. So, this will continue up to which point up to the point till a stop codon comes. So, once a stop codon comes here no tRNA will bind and then the system knows that that is the end of it the whole protein is released. Okay. Now, this uh, I think it is also shown here the growing polypeptide chain this is the this is the P site this is the A site you see the A site that is coming. So, the the fourth one is added to the third one. So, while doing that it is shifted to the right side then it moves. Okay. I think that is uh, once you go through this slide it will be even more clear I have explained it. Yeah. Now, there is some questions what is the that means, whether uh, all all uh, proteins do not have methionine as the end terminus, because this translation process demands that all proteins because the starting point is A u g which codes for methionine. So, the question is whether all proteins have methionine as the end terminus that is not it, because many proteins have different different end terminus amino acid. So, what happens that translation tells you that the methionine should be at the end terminus, but there is another process which is beyond translation that is called post translational modification that if methionine is not required as the end terminal amino acid then there are enzymes which will take care of this process the methionine will be removed and uh, the correct protein will be made. Okay. So, that is called post translational modification. Now, that is, uh, but for uh, your eukaryotes there is some problem. The problem is that in prokaryotes whatever messenger RNA is coming that is completely uh, converted uh, into the protein. It is it there is no other processing needed in between, but in eukaryotes what happens the mRNA that is transcribed from the template stand of the DNA that is what is called pre mRNA. Why pre mRNA? Because this mRNA is made up of definitely all these codons are there. However, all the portions of it does not code for the protein. In case of prokaryotes the full mRNA suppose this is your start codon and this is your stop codon. So, the protein will be made according to this the codon sequence, but in case of pre in case of eukaryotes the pre mRNA will have to be further processed to make what is called a mature mRNA. What is mature mRNA? Where the full portion from start to stop is transcribed in is translated into the protein stop and then uh, start and then stop. Then this portion will be translated into the protein this is not because this contains some portions which are in which are not 
passing any information which does not code for any amino acid. Okay. So, we will in the next lecture we will do that, we will describe how it is done. Thank you.